Welcome to this edition of Inside Tulsa Athletics. Today we'll feature five of our teams that are going to the state tournament. Rogers and Booker T. Girls, Edison Memorial and Booker T. Boys all will play at the Lloyd Noble Center on Wednesday and Thursday of this week. We'll also have Jen Sanders, Marlon Houston from the office, and wrap it up with Mick Wilson, the executive director, to talk about basketball. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics, our championship show. And uh, we have the executive director of athletics for the Tulsa Public Schools, Mick Wilson. And Mick, what a great week, uh, three weeks of basketball for TPS. Gil, it's been unbelievable. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of travel. I don't know how many miles I've put on the car, but it's been a bunch. And uh, it sure has uh, been exciting to see our team succeed and have success at the highest level. And then, uh, Obviously, a few teams that didn't make it that were right there, probably just quite good enough, but maybe uh, a loose ball or a rebound or a turnover didn't go their way at the end. But uh, it's been uh, it's been a great uh, two or three weeks for Tulsa Public School well, basketball. We had eight going into the final week, and we had four out of uh, five out of that. So, uh, what a what a great opportunity I think for our young people to uh, to be able to play. Let's talk a little bit about uh, TPS basketball. Uh, uh, we're in pretty good shape right now. I, uh, I like our chances. Again, uh, obviously, uh, the last couple of years before Memorial lands and their tradition and where they've been in the, in the state uh, championship tournament the last few years, obviously, uh, their experience has really bode well for them. Uh, I've told all people here the last uh, month or so that I felt like the Edison boys were as hot as any team in the state. I think they're going to continue to play well and uh, really have a, have a chance. They've got a turf, tough first round game. But uh, I think they match up well. I think they can cause uh, Dell City some problems. And of course, uh, then we've got uh, our other boys team that's in, in 5A uh, or in 6A with Booker T. Washington boys. Uh, they've kind of surprised people come on late, kind of mm -hmm. out of nowhere. And uh, that's uh, due to a lot of good coaching by Eli. And it's also, uh, again, tradition with those kids. They expect to win when they walk on the court. So uh, I like our chances on the boys' side with the girls. Um, again, I don't know how many I think we're sitting at four or five straight years, the Rogers girls to uh, get into the state tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach Adkism has done such a great job. And I'm excited to see those girls and uh, what they're going to do. And then, of course, uh, just having Coach Levy here on the show uh, just prior to me getting here, uh, he's done a great job with them. And they've really, uh, you know, I think they struggled a little bit early on in the season. A little bit of that probably was uh, playing with a lot of young players. But as, as you put up the entire season now, uh, under your belt, they're, they're obviously playing better, making better decisions with the ball, taking better shots, and really understanding the, uh, what it takes to win close ball games. So uh, I like our chances, Gil. I think we've got uh, good coaches, good players, and the right things in place for us to, to really have maybe a run here. Uh, well, you know, and, and our teams are young. Very young. As you see, uh, we're going to have several of these teams uh, next year, uh, one being the Booker T. Washington girls and the Tournament of Champions as we're trying to wrap up. Uh, selecting our teams for next year, and we just about got that ready to go. But uh, we do have some young teams. You know, we had two two boys teams that played into the uh, the last day with a chance to go in, and Central boys and and Hale boys both uh, got close and didn't quite get there. Both were probably obviously good enough, but again, some bad breaks or uh, you know some something happened at the wrong time kind of cost them. But uh, I think they'll be as talented as anybody around. So again, we we do have some young talent. We have some good players returning. And again, uh, it'll be exciting as we not look too far out front, but we will have uh, one eye on the future again for, ne for next year, and uh, we'll have some good teams. And I think uh, uh, Coach Rutherford out at McLean uh, went a lot further than a lot of people thought it would. You know, I watched the game where they got upset, and uh, it was probably a game that they should have won, and they just didn't shoot the ball well that night at all, couldn't get the ball to go in. And uh, they probably would have had a little, maybe a little easier. N none of the paths are easy, as you know, but it maybe have been a little uh, less resistant if they'd stayed on that winner's side right. of the bracket. But uh, of course, Randy does a good job and those kids uh, played really hard. He had a group this year that really defended and got up and down the court and uh, played real well, but they were they were right there as well. So yeah, they were real enjoyable to watch and uh, it'll be interesting to see what they return and how they uh, come back next year. I think that helps them too. Yeah, helps Central and, and McLean, obviously uh, playing uh, in the green country 
where they play that level of competition than playing three and four A. Yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, I, I really thought there were some flashes of our, our Green Country Conference this year that made me think back to the days when, when I coached in the Green Country and it was Booker T. Washington and East Central and Memorial and, you know, and Central and those folks that uh, you look in the 5A rankings and you see all of a sudden mm -hmm. that there's three or four teams ranked in the top 10. And at one point this year, you know, we had one, three and one, three and four, or one, three and five with Memorial Hale right. and Edison all being ranked in the, in the top five. So uh, again, we were within uh, just a couple of uh, bad trips up and down the court of having three uh, Tulsa Public Schools teams in the 5A boys out of the eight. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll bounce back and uh, have a chance for Hale to get in there next year. But uh, again, hats off to, to Coach Allison and Coach Parrish for being able to hold together a tough 5A schedule through uh, everything through the green country and then uh, be ready to be a serious contender this year in the state tournament. That's tough. Uh, uh, how do you feel about uh, the Wednesday, Thursday situation? Well, you know, uh, we'd heard some rumblings that that po possibly would happen back at the beginning of the year. And uh, when that kind of came to fruition, it caused us all to to uh, pause a little. I didn't know uh, whether it would be 6A the first day and on that Wednesday or 5A. And as we found out uh, just a few days ago, it was 5A, 5A boys and girls on Wednesday. I think the, the good thing is, is if uh, if your game's early enough, obviously you can come home and sleep in your own bed and then go back for right. the for the semis and finals. But uh, the way the schedule has fallen, I'm not sure any of our teams can do that. In fact, I had to change my itinerary, Gil, because I was going to drive back after Wednesday. But when I see that I've got, we've got Memorial Boys at 9 o'clock on Wednesday night and yeah. then Booker T. Washington girls in 6A 10:30. at 10.30 the next day. So I'm going to just uh, obviously spend the night and go watch plenty of basketball. But uh, I think it's, it's probably a, a good adjustment because I think kids play hard to get to that to get to that venue. And sometimes when you go and play another high school at a subsite, it doesn't quite have that feel of the state tournament. Not so the same. I think in the kid business, I really appreciate the OSSA doing that. It's maybe caused us a little inconvenience, but in the grand scheme of things, it's those kids, all kids now get a chance to play in the Lloyd Noble uh, Center at OU. And so uh, it'll make their memory even that much more special. That'll be great. Well, congratulations on your teams. I think it's a great week and hopefully, uh, uh, we'll be uh, talking about some gold balls here in about three well, weeks. That's what we hope, Gil. That's our intention. We'll be right back with Marlon Houston, Director of Athletics. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against one tough competitor, Glass. That's right. Only glass bottles and jars are recyclable. Don't even think about sinking a drinking glass or mirror. Always good to empty your glass bottles and jars before recycling. These two get it, emptying both bottles from far out, and they remove the lids. Score big by recycling your glass bottles and jars. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Nathan Hills means that you have to be consistent, outgoing, and be dedicated because, because students at Nathan Hill look up to, to the football team. Being an athlete at Nathan Hill has taught me to be confident and disciplined and always to be open-minded and always ready to work with people no matter how difficult it is. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. And now we have Marlon Houston, Assistant Director of Athletics, Tulsa Public Schools. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Well, I would I would be remiss with your wrestling background not to mention the the, the Big Twelve championships and the upcoming uh, NCAA championship. Yeah, the Big Twelve championships was this uh, past weekend, and um, our executive AD was able to get us some extra tickets, so I was able to invite our local coaches, and some of them brought their their wrestlers, so that was real fun, let, allowing them to see the next level of wrestling, and it was real exciting, really good turnout as it always is BOK is a, a wonderful venue and then now next week we'll have the NCAA championships back at the same venue um, now if we get extra tickets for that that's going to be a miracle because <laughs> I paid uh, 320 for my tickets it's hard to, it's hard to get those tickets well the BOK people have always been good to us when we've had things like that they've, they've given TPS uh, since we have a partnership with them uh, uh, with the shootout and, and now the tournament champions, but hopefully they, they come through. Yeah, they've been they've always been good. It depends on how many they get, <laughs> right? You know, and uh, the national championship and dealing with the NCAA is just a little bit different uh, yes. than the Big Twelve. I can tell you, no doubt, no they're, doubt, they're a little bit tighter on things and so on. 
Anyhow, so uh, uh, what did you think about the level of rest in Missouri winning? I thought that was interesting. They had a, a really tough lineup. They're, they have their own style of wrestling. They're real defensive, and uh, they scramble well. And they're a solid team. They're a really good tournament team, much I better see. tournament team than a, their dual lineup. But, yeah, they they pretty much uh, was unchallenged with their championship. Oh, yeah, I thought that the, the different point differential was, was really big for that, that tournament. They had uh, – I think they had two Oklahoma wrestlers in their lineup. Oh, really? I think so. Well, I'll be. Well, as we move into uh, – Spring and you know spring break is a week away and uh, seems like it's early this year for some reason. But uh, uh, let's talk about the sports that you sponsor and, and supervise in the spring. In the spring, I cover tennis and actually right now, today we're having our our tennis tournament, our uh, all city. We're holding at Booker T. They have that new tennis oh, new facility. Tennis courts, yes. And so we're going to split with a group of them at Booker T and then Lacey Park. So that's taking place right now as we speak. That is fantastic to be able to have it back on. We had to depend on so many different people in the past to have that tournament. So now we depend on our own. That's oh, good. yeah. Everyone was, all the coaches was impressed with the facility. So good. pretty good. excited to get back to that today. I need to go over and see that. I haven't seen that since it was has been completed, but. Uh, was in on the, the planning stages early <laughs> on years ago. Uh, what other things do you have in the spring? In the spring, we're planning for our bike club rally that we have the uh, second week in May. I believe the day is May 10th. We'll have all the schools that participate in bike club. We'll meet downtown at the Guthrie Green. They'll have their bikes there. They'll put on a little presentation and BMX show. And then once they get through their presentations and their activities, all the kids and sponsors will ride their bikes to the gathering place. So they'll ride through downtown and it's it's pretty awesome because all the workers downtown, you'll see them looking out of their window and mm -hmm. people will cheer and it's it's just a uh, it's just an awesome show showing of our kids and and what the bike club means to them and what they mean to our school district and our community. And then they head to uh, the gathering place and they have activities for them there. They'll feed them. It's a, it, we did it last year. It was a huge success. So we're starting the planning for that now. And then also towards the end of the year in the physical education department, we put on that all city uh, elementary track meet, track meet you bet. and that's also going to be the second week in May. So we're planning for that. And uh, we usually hold that at East central high school, uh, East side sports complex. And then a lot of our volunteers will help work that. And I tell you, one of the best things that I enjoy about my job is our physical educated, physical education teachers, they really do a good job of working they and, do. Yeah. and get those uh, – never have a problem with them helping out. I was so glad that uh, when we were able to put in track cross country into the junior high because we would have this huge elementary meet and then there was nothing for those kids for three years, sixth, seventh, eighth grade until they got to be freshmen. So now the continuation of that really makes mm -hmm. a difference. I think that's uh, that's fantastic. That's, a, that's really a neat day. If people have never seen that, uh, the effort that the kids put out, and like you say, the, the instructors, teachers, uh, all volunteering and working the events and everything, it's really a neat day. And, you know, it's been a well-oiled machine. And this will be my second year being in charge of that. And it's just, it's just like a fast stream. You just jump in and go with the flow. It works out really good. Oh, yeah, you bet. Well, we want to. We also want to congratulate uh, uh, one of our Hall of Famers, Kenny Mundy, who becomes the head coach at Morgan State. And, oh yeah, uh, I know that uh, you'll be getting in touch with him, and uh, hopefully uh, he'll be in town next week for the national championship, and uh, uh, we'll get, maybe get to see him again. So, well, hey, we'll have you back. I'm sure before the year's out. Okay, uh, we yeah. Have too many more shows to go. <laughs> and uh, when we come back, we will have Jen Sanders, the deputy director of athletics. Hey Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is looking to defend their title against aluminum and steel cans. Bob, most people think of the kitchen for this opponent, but aluminum and steel cans like empty shaving cream cans also play extremely well in bathrooms all over Tulsa. That was nothing but bin, Bob. 
Wow, right into the bin. Team Johnson has buttoned up another win. Score big by recycling your aluminum and steel cans. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Booker T. Washington has taught me to carry myself with class as an athlete, student, and friend, and um, to have responsibility on and off the field, um, and that it's the littlest things that will make all the difference in the long run. Being an athlete at Memorial High School has taught me to be a better person because when you play sports, attitude is the main thing you have to deal with, not just your own, but other people's. It also teaches you to be the bigger person. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have the former Deputy Director of Athletics, Jen Sanders. Jen's moving on to another job, but uh, Jen, welcome to the show. Thanks. Uh, maybe we'll have you on in your new role when we start talking about recruiting. I sometime. hope so. I that'd, hope so. That'd be fantastic. Well, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your job, your time you spent uh, uh, in the district office, and uh, uh, and maybe two or three things that uh, people really don't know that you do. Okay. Um, you know, I, I was seven years in the district office as the assistant athletic director and deputy director of athletics. Um, dream job right from the get go. You know, I supported our physical education teachers in the beginning and um, handled, you know, everything from bike club to volleyball, cheerleading, all of that stuff. And then got to support our, our soccer folks and uh, and uh, softball and, and, and some of those things as well, junior high football. But I just really loved it. It was a, it's a great place to work. Um, you know, you go in every day and there is something new every day, mm -hmm. something good sometimes, something not so good, but, um, every day is different. You know, there's no day that I can remember that was the same. So, um, as you used to say, there's always opportunities for management and that's yep. very true. So it's yeah, a it's great the, job. The, the, the challenges are there. And, uh, uh, if you are a little weak in challenges, you don't need to be in that area. Right. It's, because yeah. there's always a opportunity to get better. So as you as you uh, went through that time, uh, what are some of the memorable experiences you might have had? Well, I think one of the some great things that happened that I, I'm really proud of and, and our schools worked hard to get. You know, we received numerous uniforms through the J.J. Watt Foundation mm -hmm. uh, Central. You know, I helped them with a, a program uh, through Good Sports where they received one hundred thousand dollars for new uniforms and equipment and things like that. Um, each year I got some corporate sponsors to sponsor so that we could, you know, provide the things that the suburbs, you know, provide without having to beg for funding. Mm -hmm. So I think that was important. I also think that, um, you know, most people don't know that when we do the Tournament of Champions that it's three 16-hour days. Uh, we do, you know, 24 games in 72 hours and pretty much you just go home and sleep for a few hours and get right back up and get after it. Um, but we do that during our, our winter break, you know, so that's the time that we're usually off work. So, um, but that's just a, a really, really special time for our kids. Um, probably one of the most memorable moments was presenting the, the gold ball, the gold trophy to uh, the tournament champions to our, my former high school, Muldrow High School. So um, there's so many memories, uh, you know, state tournament after state tournament, getting to, to get out there with those kids and put medals around their neck. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's just fun. You know, it's fun to see kids excel. It's fun for signing day to see those kids, you know, finish up their, you know, high school career and, and move on to college. And um, graduation is also an, ex an exciting moment. It's just all the things that really make Tulsa Public Schools um, a great place to work. It really is. I, you know, the, the opportunity for those kids and, uh, to uh, play at that level in those venues and to have the success uh, that mm -hmm. they've had. Uh, it, it is a, a, a great uh, professional uh, happening mm -hmm. for all of us that uh, uh, have those times. As you, uh, as you uh, get ready to move into a new job, tell us about your new job. Well, you know, I never thought I would leave athletics. Um, and, you know, I think I'm just the kind of person that likes to try something new about every seven or eight years. Um, and so I really kind of thought to myself, why did I come to Tulsa? And I remember the day that I made the decision to take the girls basketball job at Hale. And it was really about the kids. And I knew they needed me. Like I knew that, you know, my other job offers that, you know, yeah, those kids were great kids and, and it would have been probably a good job as well. But I just felt like the kids from Tulsa needed me. And in retrospect, they changed my life much more than I ever changed theirs. 
Um, some of them would probably tell you something that I changed <laughs> their life, but truly they made me a better person. They made me want to uh, make sure that all kids in Tulsa can be successful. And so as I kind of grappled with those thoughts, I thought to myself, you know, how can I make a bigger impact um, in getting folks um, to Tulsa to see mm -hmm. that, you know, we, this is a great place to be and that our kids are great kids. So um, that's kind of where, where, I, where I landed. And luckily enough, there was a position open in recruiting. And so um, I applied and, and, and received that position. And now I'm just uh, hit the ground running, I would say. So um, I'm excited about getting people to Tulsa. So uh, will you go to job fairs yep. and yeah? So like we that? we will host our own job fairs. I've already attended quite a few uh, career fairs at TU and and uh, getting ready to go to Northeastern and OSU and all those places. But um, and I think I've missed talking to you know some of our uh, our kid you know college kids. So yeah. but on March 23rd we are going to have a teacher fair uh, at the Education Service Center in the Selman Room. Uh, the ESC is located at 3027 South New Haven. Uh, from 4 to 5.30, we'll be interviewing elementary teachers. We'll have uh, school leaders from across the district, from every school. And then from 5.30 to 7, same scenario with our secondary teachers and our secondary school principals. Um, and then if anybody wants to apply, you can uh, go to tulsaschools.org forward slash careers. Um, or if you just, you have, you're a little more interested and you want a, you know, a personal email, you can uh, email jointeamtulsa at tulsaschools.org. So... I'm excited. I think that um, we'll make an impact and hopefully we'll hire some great coaches as well. I do too. I know we, we hate to see you go, but good luck. And I think it'll be a, a tremendous challenge uh, uh, to do the recruiting. I think that's always a, a fun time. So yeah. thanks for being here. And we'll try to have you back sometime. Thank you. And when we come back, we'll have Carlin Adkism, the head girls basketball coach at Rogers. Hey, Tulsa, we have a crushing recycle play of the day for you. Team Johnson versus paper and cardboard. They're starting off slow today, probably trying to figure out what to do with those styrofoam plates since they're not recyclable. There's the big play we were waiting for. Boom! Completely empty cardboard boxes dunked in the cart. Score big by recycling your cardboard and paper. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Edison High School has taught me to work as a team rather than as an individual. Whenever you're on a team, you have a special bond with each other. You know you can rely on them in a time of need, whether on or off the court. Whether it be a shoulder to cry on or advice on how you can improve, you know your team will always be there for you. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. And now we have Carlin Adkism, head girl basketball coach of the Rogers Ropers. Carlin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Congratulations Thank on you. qualifying for the state tournament. Thank and, you. Uh, and another conference championship. Yes, sir. Uh, Thank fantastic. you. Fantastic. Uh, we're taping this on Tuesday. You play on Wednesday. Yeah. And they the, and our viewers won't see this till Thursday. Right. So right. we're going to talk about your opponent. Okay. And uh, then we'll see if you were right or not. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> well, you've got to, to tell us a, a quickly about how you got through the regional area and a little bit was tough at times, but yeah, yeah, we had uh, Edison uh, at first, and then we um, had a uh, game against Pryor, which was a tough game back and forth, back and forth, and um, th these this team just showed their resi resilience and um, told you know they just showed why they were, were a state team, and um, and they just pulled it out at the end, um, and. I, they just have been playing well the last few games. So you get to the area tournament. All right. Yeah, the area tournament was pretty tough. I mean, we, we, we had some pauper, which is, uh, you know, just a you know tough task for anybody. And, um, uh, you know, it, it didn't go our way, you know, but we learned from it. You know, we learned from it, and then we just had to move on. Uh, I, told the, I told the girls we're going to put five minutes on the board. We'll talk about this, and then we're gonna forget about it because we have a move on. Because you know, in the past, when we sit there and dwell on that loss, it kind of runs into that Saturday, mm -hmm. and we didn't want that to happen to us. We knew, you know, that that Saturday was gonna be a tough game for us, and so we have to move on pretty fast from that. Well, that's good. So you went there and you get ready to play, and now you're gonna and you uh, you uh, you're going to Oklahoma, or actually going to Norman, Norman uh, yeah. play at Lloyd Noble. Uh, and uh, you got the well, in the Breakfast Club, you know, ten thirty <laughs> start with uh, with Carl Albert. Tell us about Carl Albert. 
we well last year we had Carl Albert first round too as well and uh, you know the day game went in our favor just a tough tough matchup they, they like to shoot the three um, great athletes um, and they, they play hard and so we know it's going to be a tough game and we you know we have practice this morning at six o'clock just for them so it's going to be a t good game for us. Well, the hay's in tomorrow now. I mean, you got to play yeah, tomorrow. You got to play. Yeah, you got to play you tomorrow. Play. And what, what effect uh, do you think – it appears to me in watching basketball over the last 10 years or so that uh, uh, in the girls' game, the three ball has been as much or more uh, a part of the game than the boys' game. Definitely. Definitely. Um, you know, I, th I think that – this you know this day and age just that's all they practice <laughs> like that's all they want to practice just shoot threes you know they you see Steph Curry you know and that's they just want to just extend their range and just shoot threes but um that's not what this team's strength is at our, our strength is inside you know we're, we're we're usually bigger than any other team and um so we, we we usually try to get the ball inside but yes yeah the other part of the game uh, is sometimes people forget about because of the three is the mm -hmm. defensive side right correct Right. Tell us about that. Well, uh, like I said, we have we have two big girls on our team, and so there are the catalysts for our defense. We kind of you know funnel everything into them, and kind of you know we always know we're going to have help. So we get really aggressive in our defense and our matchup zones and things like that. So our defense has pretty much you know you know the reason why we got us you know why we're here. You know? What are you going to have to do to be able to shut Carl Albert down? Um, get back in transition and locate the shooters. Uh, they, you know, they, they, they got more than two shooters in their starting lineup. So like I said, you got to locate where they're at and transition and, and, and hopefully be there on the catch. Who are your two guys or two or three guys that uh, will make a difference uh, tomorrow? Uh, well, you know, Sonia Morrison has just been our, soft, our sophomore, Sonia Morrison. She's been uh, our leader on the court. You know, she's, she's been playing some great basketball. Uh, I believe she's averaging 16 points, and um, she had an area game, even though it didn't go our way. She had 25. She let out scores, and then she came back with another 19 against Prior. I'm sorry, against Grove. Um, Juliana Madlock. She's been playing great basketball. Uh, she almost had a double double against uh, Grove, uh, and, and then my other big Nellie Simmons. Uh, those three have been playing some great basketball and, and just, you know, putting us in the right position to be, you know, to be successful. Well, that's good. You got to play defense. You got to yeah. play that side of the ball. You got to play some defense. Well, uh, we hope you uh, have a successful trip down to the campus. Thank you. To OU and uh, can uh, uh, end up, can come back on Friday, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tell our viewers the, uh, the tournament uh, uh, so that everybody can play at the Lloyd Noble. The OSSA has made the decision. Mm -hmm. uh, to play five A's on Wednesday and the six A's on Thursday uh, with the winners coming back on Friday. And so that's why the Wednesday start this year for yeah. uh, the, all the five A boys and girls teams. So good luck. And uh, hopefully we'll have you on in the spring and we can talk about that gold ball. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. When we come back, we're going to have Rabu Leva, the head girls coach at Booker T. Washington. Hey Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against one tough competitor, glass. That's right, only glass bottles and jars are recyclable. Don't even think about sinking a drinking glass or mirror. Always good to empty your glass bottles and jars before recycling. These two get it, emptying both bottles from far out, and they remove the lids. Score big by recycling your glass bottles and jars. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. I feel like athletics is so important at Tulsa Central because it's an outlet for some of our kids there. They get a, a better opportunity to basically give back to our community. At McLean, the sports is what mainly drives a bunch of the students to come to school every single day and work hard because they want to be able to come from the classroom to the field or the court and show at what they're good at. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we had the head girls basketball coach, Booker T. Washington Hornets, Rabu Leva. Rabu, congratulations and welcome to the show. Ben, thank you for having me and excited for the tournament. Oh, no kidding. It's all this, uh, it's always good to be on this show. 
<laughs> it is. It this is. show is a show before the <laughs> state tournament, so uh, you know you've had a good year. Let's talk about your uh, regional area games. Yeah, we started off with Union. Um, they were a little bit of a dark horse. They had some injuries throughout the season, so they weren't your typical uh, 16 seed, but we played well, won by 20, uh, defended well, and then we had Jinx in the regional finals, and that game was a double over, uh, sorry, overtime victory for us. We're down um, five with about a minute left. And I told the girls afterwards, I said, that math was not looking very good mm -hmm. for a victory. Um, but all season long, we talked to the girls about being resilient, resilient, defending. If you can do those things in playoff time, just be resilient and defend really hard. Usually good things can bounce your way. So we were very fortunate to win the regional championship. Um, and that gave us two chances to get the state. We played um, Broken Arrow in the, in the area finals and lost them by five. Good back and forth game. It was our fourth time playing Broken Arrow. Mm -hmm. Well coached team. Uh, and I told the girls, they were just a little bit better than us. And I mean, I try to say us. I hate when it's like, well, the kids didn't. Hey, we are all we win together, we lose sure. together. Um, and then we had a chance to play Sand Springs, who we had seen once during the season. And the girls played really well, defended hard, and uh, we were able to punch a ticket. Well, I tell you, it's always great to, to be able to do that. Yes. To get to that point. Uh, especially when you lose that game and then you got to come back and play. Yeah. But uh, uh, the year that you had and being number one most of the year, uh, those kids were expecting to win. And I think that makes a lot of difference. Absolutely. Expect, expect to win. Uh, so you get through that time and you uh, uh, you get to go to uh, Lloyd Noble yes. uh, on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, what type of experience is that for your, for your girls? Well, I actually went to team camp there over the summer. And one of the reasons we went was just in case we had a chance to go back. Um, so the girls are excited. They're excited to get back to uh, Lloyd Noble, and they're just excited to have a chance to play in the state tournament. We start three sophomores, two freshmen. Um, and so they're like kid in the candy store. Like, this is, this is great. Let's go do this, coach. So um, the, the expectation is just to play really hard and just do what we've done all season long. Be who you are. That's good. I think uh, finding, uh, finding your role – be who you are. Yes. Uh, and to fulfill that. And uh, uh, what uh, to what extent does uh, uh, defense play uh, to get to this point? Um, I think it's something that you have complete control over. You know, sometimes, you know as well as I do, sometimes that orange ball just does not want to go inside that rim. Right. Um, but your ability to defend and make the other team's life hard is something that you can do game in and game out. Um, I went to point guard college this summer online, and they talk about taking the team that takes seven, eight, nine shots usually wins the game. So our job is to try to make the other team take four, five, and six. It's not terrible shots, mm -hmm. but just that mediocre shot. If we can get them to take those, and we can take seven, eight, nine shots over the course of the game, that way is usually a recipe for victory. So we talk a lot about in wins and losses, who took the easiest shots and who made the other team take hard shots. And it's been a really good teach tool for our kids because we're not we're not saying don't shoot. We're saying hunt this yeah. and make the other team hunt five, six, seven shots. So yeah. um, that's something we've talked about all season long. You know, it seems like, and I said this earlier, one of our coaches, uh, it seemed like uh, the three ball has had more of an impact on girls basketball than, than the boys basketball. Do you think that? Uh, I think it's had a, a, a big impact. I think uh, teaching kids what you should be shooting from three. You know, so in the summer, I'd say the AAU game, you might get 20 shots. Yeah. And that's not good or bad. Just It is what it is. But in a high school game, every kid can't get 20 shots. Right. So can you find your two or three good shots and not and be okay with that? Um, we talk a lot about Joe Bob in the stands, you know, because every kid has a Joe Bob. Somebody's saying, you should have done this. You should have right. shot more. And the kids have got to be able to process that underneath, underneath, the, underneath what the team wants to do. So we talk a lot about just take good shots, be a good teammate, mm -hmm. sacrifice for the team. That's good. Well, your uh, your opponent, uh, you know, uh, uh, at Memorial, uh, uh, twenty one and four, mm -hmm. uh, pretty good, pretty good club. Pretty, pretty good club. I, I tell the girls at State, there's no bad teams, and if you want to win a championship, you got to beat them anyway. So we're looking forward to playing at Memorial. We think it's a good matchup for us. Um, like I said, we, we basically start five guards. Uh, and more plays a lot of man-to-man -man defense. So I think that plays to our advantage mm -hmm. where they've got to guard all five of our players. There's nobody that you can kind of cheat off of. Um, and But they're a very good team. They've got a couple Division One kids, um, some really talented guards. They're well coached. Uh, it's the kind of game you want to play in, though, where it's going to be two good teams going at it. Yeah, but five guards, do you, do you run a lot more than most people do? 
Um, you know, I think the, the, the game of basketball for girls has really changed and gone more to that. So, hmm. no, I think most teams we play have three, four, five guards on the court um, almost at all times. You know, so even if you play, you know, we have a 6'3 a young lady that comes in, great player for us. But I tell her, I say, hey, you got to be able to guard somebody because the other team may not have a 6'3 player that's right. going to go down low. You got to be able to high hedge a screen. You know, you got to be able to switch and do – a serviceable, serviceable job guarding, she really has. Oh, well, fantastic. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, good luck this week uh, on the campus uh, at Lloyd Noble, and uh, hopefully we come back in about two weeks and talk about a gold ball. Oh, absolutely, yes. We'll be right back with Michael Parrish, the head boys basketball coach of the Edison Eagles. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against a tough competitor, Plastic. Don't trust those numbers on the bottom. You have to stick to what you know. Only bottles and jugs found in the kitchen, bath, or laundry. They're quick to pick up and empty those bottles before sinking that shot. Always empty your bottles before recycling. Score big by recycling your plastic bottles and jugs. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. I love Will Rogers athletics because it helped me physically, spiritually, and emotionally through all the journeys I've been through at that school. Um, all of the support staff helped me a lot, and it's just an amazing school. Athletics at Will Rogers changed my life because it became a second family with the support of my coaches and teammates. It's helped me gain confidence, work as a team, and will help me in college and in life. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we had the head boys basketball coach, Edison Prep, Michael Parrish. Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Thank uh, you. All fine the state tournament. It's always great to, uh, on this show to have our championship week. And uh, we have five schools involved this year. So that's, or five teams uh, from four schools. You go, you go to the regional, uh, you know, uh, regional area. T take us through that uh, two weeks. Well, it's um, a fight all year to host a regional. So hosting a regional is a big deal for all the teams. Um, if you look traditionally throughout history, the teams that host, a lot of them make the state tournament. So hosting is a big deal. We were lucky enough to host, so we were able to play at home, um, you know, which, uh, you know, shooting on your home goals, having having all the, the home fans there is, is a big deal. And... Uh, I thought the team responded well. We played well first night. Um, you know, then we came back the second night and played, a, a, you know, what I thought was a bit of an upset with uh, Glenpool beating Claremore. And so uh, Glenpool, um, they pressed. They liked to play up tempo, was which we wanted to play. So we ended up playing well that night. And um, I was proud of our kids to get to celebrate at home a regional championship. Mm -hmm. But... The kids were great because we won a regional championship last year and didn't make the state tournament. So uh, they weren't too excited. They knew that there was still work to do ahead. So leading into the area tournament, um, we were still pretty focused. So you get the area tournament now. Who's your first opponent there? <laughs> well, we get Teddy, Teddy Owens, an ex-assistant of mine um, who I know quite well and um, who does a, a great job, has a good staff. They got a really good, good team. And... Um, you know, um, them coming into 5A late, um, put a, a late, uh, you know, getting to know their team, mm -hmm. um, scouting them. Though, you, it takes time to kind of to learn teams. So uh, late getting a, a start with them, um, but um, knowing them and knowing their players, we were scrimmaging them over, over Thanksgiving. So we had had Hall and Hall first and um, – just a, a classic. Um, another nail biter goes into overtime. Um, you know, last second thriller all the way to the end in overtime, and uh, we fell short. Um, and uh, it, we, you know, we had a shot to tie it at the end and, and didn't, and um, had to turn around and then play the next day, which is the area Saturday. And I, I really think area Saturday for any class is the hardest day in, mm -hmm. in Oklahoma basketball. You have half the teams playing, go home and heartbroken. And, you know, you're seeing parents see their kids play for the last time. And then the other half are elated going to the mm -hmm. state tournament. So um, it's just, I really would have liked to have went on Friday to get in and, and gotten to go scout and enjoy my Saturday. But we were back Saturday to fight and do it all over again. We played Grove who, 
who was uh, really good. Um, they had a really good player. Uh, they wanted to play up tempo a little bit with us too, which played up to our game. So um, we we had a good game Saturday, and it was great to see the kids um, celebrate and um, get back to the state tournament. The finality of the area tournament is always difficult both ways. Absolutely. It really is tough for, for, for both groups. So uh, you draw Dell City. Uh, Dell City comes in uh, 18 and 6. Uh, what do you know about them? Well, they have an All-American, the Garrison kid, 6'9", really good, um, lengthy. Um, you know, we got a little bit of a taste of that with Hale, their, their big kid. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, you know, watching them, learning them, you know, Lenny Hatchett does a great job at mm -hmm. Dell City. They, they traditionally have been in the state tournament for a while now. And so our, our challenge is right in front of us. But um, I like my team. I like our competitiveness. And, and uh, I know we'll be ready to play on Wednesday. Uh, a little change in format this year, uh, playing at Lloyd Noble. Uh, the five A's are playing on Wednesday. How do you like that? Well, we just talked about it, and in some ways, financially, it's it's hard because you're there longer. And but um, I've been doing this long enough where I've seen teams play in sub sites, and you know, um, you know, personally, as a father of one of the players, uh, I coached in the 2009. A state championship game in Lloyd Noble and I have a picture of my son who was five at the time standing next to me in Lloyd Noble watching that game and so for him to get a chance as a senior to play in that gym um, that he's watched all the way through growing up um, that's special for us as a family um, special for him but it's it's going to be special for all the kids and all the teams and all the classes I like it that they're going to get a chance to play in Lloyd Noble it's going to be a, a tremendous uh, environment I'm sure and uh, uh, with all the five A's in there one day, everybody has something in common. They're all in the same class for, right. for a change. You're not playing five A, six A, six whatever. Eight. So, uh, well, Michael, congratulations uh, you, on a good year. And uh, hopefully uh, we can have you back in uh, three weeks and talk about that gold ball. That'd be great. Congratulations. Thank you. When we come back, we'll have Eli Brown, who is the head boys basketball coach of the Booker T. Washington Hornets. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is looking to defend their title against aluminum and steel cans. Bob, most people think of the kitchen for this opponent, but aluminum and steel cans, like empty shaving cream cans, also play extremely well in bathrooms all over Tulsa. That was nothing but bin, Bob. Wow, right into the bin. Team Johnson has buttoned up another win. Score big by recycling your aluminum and steel cans. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Edison High School has taught me to work as a team rather than as an individual. Whenever you're on a team, you have a special bond with each other. You know you can rely on them in a time of need, whether on or off the court. Whether it be a shoulder to cry on or advice on how you can improve, you know your team will always be there for you. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have Eli Brown. The head boys basketball coach of the Booker T. Washington Hornets. Congratulations. Thank making you. the state tournament. It's always great to be on this show because this is the show right before the state tournament. Absolutely. It's fun to be back. And thank well, you for having me. Well, we're glad that you're there. And uh, let's talk a little bit about how you got there through the regional mm -hmm. and the area. It was a tough two weeks. It was a difficult two weeks, but it was fun. And uh, we grew up a lot. I think my young kids grew up a lot. Uh, we had to go against Stillwater, which was was a good game and a good preparation for us for Owasso, which we had only saw them that one time this season. And Owasso has some really good young talent, and Coach Mynati son is really good. And Coach is already a great coach out there at Owasso. So he, with that young talent, he's, he's, he's doing a great job. And so we ended up losing that game at home, and they, they won the regional championship on our floor, which we didn't like that, but it, it kind of helped us grow up a little bit and understand what we need to do in the playoffs. From there, we had to go play in the constellation bracket of the area tournament. And we ended up going to Kellyville, facing off against Union, who we had already played twice that year and split with. Both were good games, second one went to overtime. Uh, that was a really great game. Came down to the wire, my young kids uh, stepped up and got the job done for us that night. And uh, the next night we go play PC West and, uh, you know, they're a really good team, coached with Lenny Burt, by Lenny Burt. And, uh, that goes down to the wire as well. And we pulled that one out. Our young kids pulled that one out again. So 
uh, we've had some adversity we, that we've overcame, and uh, now we're here. We are in the state tournament. You know, you 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 play games like that, and uh, you, you build this in your mind. There's an expectation that you will win. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of teams can't get over that hump sometimes that they've they've lost and or we're in the loser's bracket or the consolation bracket, and, and uh, it's not a good thing. But once you get into that and you feel like you have a chance to win, then uh, I think it, 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 the whole psyche of the team changes. Oh, you know what? Um, this is a young, inexperienced uh, team. And all throughout the year, we, we, we were trying to get them to show their swag, show their confidence, and all those things. and. Now you can see it. Practice yesterday was 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 totally different than any practice we've had all year because they were super confident, super excited, uh, uh, and super determined. Um, and that came from those tough wins that that we were probably counted out before we even stepped on the floor. I think one of the hardest things uh, to do, especially with young players, uh, is to have everybody realize what their role is. Mm -hmm. With the team, mm -hmm. uh, am I the sixth man off the bench? Uh, am I a starter? Uh, can I? Am I going to run? Do I need to play better defense? Right. Do you find what your role is? Mm -hmm. And once they all get that definition of what their role is, uh, and sometimes it takes a season, absolutely, uh, to get there. Absolutely. You know? you know, it's funny you say that because I told one of my assistants I think that we have finally figured that part out. Our kids have finally figured out how hard you got to play all game long, what they are good at and what they aren't good at, because we talked about that all year. You don't want to go out there and show teams and players and coaches what you're not good at. So let's just stick right. to what we're good at, individually and collectively. And I think they really figured that out in these playoffs and it's all coming together. Uh, we hope that translates into three more wins this week. And even if it doesn't, uh, the, the, the process of figuring that out and, for them to realize that it has been special. It is, you know, I, uh, one of my former uh, coaching terms when I coached football was, uh, uh, it doesn't make any difference where you start out, it's where you end up. That's right. You know, the, at right. the end of the day, that's where you want to be. That's right. Well, let's talk about uh, going to Lug Noble on the campus of uh, the University of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll be special. Absolutely. For your student athletes. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. you get a, Really difficult opponent, Edmund North. Mm -hmm. Twenty, uh, what, twenty-three and two? And two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we faced them last year in the state tournament in the semifinals, and they beat us, I believe, maybe five or six points, uh, and they went on to be the champion. So they're defending the champions, and we get them again in the first round this year. Uh, we played them earlier in the year in the Edmund Open, um, and they beat us in that game pretty good. Uh, so we, we, we've, we've seen this this foe before and we're familiar with them. However, it doesn't make the the, the game any easier, <laughs> um, but they're good. They're a special team. They're well coached with Coach Norris. Him and I go back to playing when he was at Coweta and I was at Central. So we have some history there and he's a great coach and it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be a hard fought, entertaining game. And uh, we hope that we play hard enough and well enough to finish it. Well, it, it is exciting. It's uh, the first round. You got some young kids playing their first round uh, mm -hmm. uh, on that uh, floor at uh, Lloyd Noble and and uh, uh, in the state tournament. So absolutely, you can't get any better than that. Really. Absolutely. I mean, those kids are excited. I got two kids back from last year's team that played on that court. So it, for a lot of those guys, it's going to be a, a new experience for them, and I'm excited for them. I just I'm excited for those. Players. Well, that's why we play the games. Absolutely. Absolutely. Coach, good luck. Thank you. And uh, congratulations on a good year. Thank you. And hopefully we'll have you back with a gold ball here. Oh, that'd be nice. Three or four weeks. We look forward to it. We'll be right back with Bobby Allison, the head coach of the Memorial Chargers, after these messages. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is looking to defend their title against aluminum and steel cans. Bob, most people think of the kitchen for this opponent, but aluminum and steel cans like empty shaving cream cans also play extremely well in bathrooms all over Tulsa. That was nothing but bin, Bob. Wow, right into the bin. Team Johnson has buttoned up another win. Score big by recycling your aluminum and steel cans. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Nathan Hills means that you have to be consistent 
outgoing and be dedicated because because students at, at Nathan Hill look up t to the football team. Being an athlete at Nathan Hill has taught me to be confident and disciplined and always to be open-minded and always ready to work with people no matter how difficult it is. Welcome back to Inside Tulsa Athletics. Now we have Bobby Allison, the head boys basketball coach of the Memorial Charger. Bobby, congratulations. Thank uh, you so much, Gil. the state tournament uh, in a, a regional area weekends that uh, uh, proved to be pretty good for you. Let's talk yeah. about uh, your postseason play up to the state tournament. Well, we opened up with Pryor. We were fortunate enough to get the one seed to earn that. And we uh, got off to a good start, um, 185 to 30. And we turned around the next night and played Grove, and uh, they came off a good win against Kawita. And they had our full attention, and you know we've really clamped down defensively uh, this postseason, uh, and we did so against Grove. I think we got up 33-13 in the first half, and then we kept it on them in the second and won that game 63-37. And then a familiar opponent, uh, area championship night with Hale, that's a top five team in the state, and and. Both times we had played them this year had come down to the buzzer. And uh, our kids really prepared all week area with a lot of respect for Hale and knew that, you know, it was a 50-50 game. And uh, we made some adjustments, guys hit some shots, and, you know, a lot, we got a lot of players that have been there before. And with them being uh, familiar with that area championship environment, uh, we were able to pull away and get back to the state tournament. And now we got the one seed. and. Doesn't mean it's easy. I mean, heck, especially with some of those teams out west, uh, we're definitely uh, focusing on southeast first and foremost. And but we're we. It's always great to talk to you this week in March you because bet. that means you're still coaching. Absolutely. So we're championship excited. week is always a great week. No doubt. Uh, to talk about how difficult is it? Uh, you know, you played the, and like I say, Hale had a tremendous year mm -hmm. really and uh, turnaround in their program uh, to have to play them three times. No, it. No, it's definitely something that I had to address because you hear a lot of chatter from social media and people saying that it's hard to beat a team three times. And I made it real obvious to the kids. I said, guys, you beat them twice. You don't have to beat them three times this weekend. Right. That would be hard. You have to beat them. And it, it's hard to beat them once. But I said, you have to beat them one time. And, I, you know, one thing I said to the kids to kind of alleviate any pressure is, you know, you're in the area championship game on that Friday. That is the last game of your high school career for seniors that you're guaranteed another game. Because if you win, you're going to state, you're not guaranteed. And if you lose, you still got another you're game. Chance, so I was yeah. like, guys, this is the last time you'll ever get to know that there is tomorrow. There's one more game. Yeah, yeah. and <laughs> I, you know, I don't know if that worked, but they sure shot it like they didn't have any weight around them. Well, I think it's, you know, the kids read so much and hear so much. Uh, outside chatter. It's hard mm -hmm. sometimes to get them to, to focus on no uh, how easy things are if you just yeah, kind of make you, it simple. You don't you let know? your brain get in the way what your body knows what to do. Exactly. Exactly right. So you made it through uh, mm -hmm. the, the area and uh, uh, who uh, who were your leaders? My seniors. Uh, I, you know, this is a deep senior class. Last year was a deep senior class with about eight guys and this year uh, uh, all these seniors, I got eight of them. They suited up last year as well. So um, they're, they're the chunk of my scoring and they're the chunk of my production and they are all the leadership. The sophomores and juniors have done a good job this year buying into their roles and doing things that the program needs them to do. And they got, they're gonna get all the expectation in about a week, mm -hmm. it's their turn. But these seniors have really um, made 2023 what it is. They didn't try to be last year's team that was arguably the best team that we've ever had. Um, but they just wanted to be the best versions of th this year's team. And Jareth Ingram and Seth Pratt have been all staters. Um, Monte Collins is now 60 and four, I believe, as a starting guard, mm -hmm. which is unbelievable. And in those four losses, we were tied or led in the fourth quarter. So, I mean, he's three or four plays away from never losing. And Ty Jamerson and Ben Radford, Got to give them a lot of credit starting all the games this year and doing some dirty work and making some big plays. And I got two seniors off the bench and Darius Toby and Keyshawn Thompson. And they combined for 10 points off the bench against Hale. And you know, you know, everybody's got your starting five scouted, but if mm. you can get 10 points off your bench, then, I mean, I don't want to call it bonus points, but it's, def <laughs> it's definitely something that 
the other team didn't plan on. You don't count on. I, I've yeah. always said that you win championships a lot of times with somebody performing better than they thought you you thought they ever would. No doubt. Uh, you know the good ones are going to perform. Yeah. But uh, it's that one that that comes up. Well, uh, in the last minute we got here, yeah. let's talk about uh, let's talk about your opponent. Yeah, Oklahoma City Southeast. We played them in the semifinals last year, uh, and they have four starters back. They they did lose a quality post uh, that's playing junior college basketball, but we uh, we we know them. We respect them. They got guard play that's as good as anybody in the state. They played Broken Arrow, who's arguably the best team in Oklahoma this year. Uh, to within two in a tournament. Right there, that tells you that it's going to be a four-quarter game. Uh, they play fast and tough. Um, they kind of remind me of Edison a little bit and a lot in two teams we've played this year. I don't know if they, uh, you know, Edison's floor spacing is a little bit different, but as far as having multiple weapons that can score, uh, Southeast has got that. they got two All-State guards that have played a lot of basketball, and uh, it's a challenge, and uh, it's one of those games that um, – the tougher team and the more together team that handles adversity will probably be the vendor. Well, good luck. It's 9 yep. p.m. on uh, Wednesday night in yep. Lloyd Noble. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll have you back in a couple of weeks and talk about gold balls. Well, that would be great. Stay tuned. We'll be back after these messages. Hey, Tulsa, welcome back to the top recycling play of the day. Team Johnson is facing off against one tough competitor, Glass. That's right, only glass bottles and jars are recyclable. Don't even think about sinking a drinking glass or mirror. Always good to empty your glass bottles and jars before recycling. These two get it, emptying both bottles from far out, and they remove the lids. Score big by recycling your glass bottles and jars. Learn more at TulsaRecycles.com. Being an athlete at Booker T. Washington has taught me to carry myself with class as an athlete, student, and friend, and um, to have responsibility on and off the field, um, and that it's the littlest things that will make all the difference in the long run. Being an athlete at Memorial High School has taught me to be a better person, because when you play sports, attitude is the main thing you have to deal with, not just your own, but other people's. It also teaches you to be the bigger person. Hope you enjoyed today's show with our five teams that have qualified for the state tournament to be held at uh, Norman, Oklahoma and Lloyd Noble at, on the campus of OU. Uh, five and 6A games will be played at the Lloyd Noble. The 5A on Wednesday and the 6A will be on Thursday. We also heard from our executive director, Mick Wilson, about our bas basketball success and uh, Marlon Houston came and told us, uh, told us about the uh, bike club and some of the spring activities. We also had Jen Sanders on uh, and congratulated her on her time uh, in the athletics department as she moves on to teacher recruitment uh, in the Education Service Center. She's been an integral part of the resurgence of athletics in Tulsa, and we certainly hate to see her go. Due to spring break, we'll be back on March the 23rd. We hope you enjoy your spring break and the state tournament.